Okay, welcome guys to part two of the video series where I talk about getting your first job in the tech industry after you graduate, your coding boot camp, your college degree, your self-taught learning experience. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the emotions that come along with you know, applying for your first job. They are there and they are powerful and I can speak firsthand to this. A lot of people are gonna be held back by the emotions they're gonna feel, whether it's imposter syndrome, which plagues our industry and has for years, whether it's nervousness, excitement, lack of motivation, whatever the case may be. So we're gonna dive right into it and talk about some of the experiences that I had when I was first starting out um, and some of the things you can expect. So that way you are prepared to dive head first and not lose momentum, not lose track until you get that first job. I wanna make sure you guys are set up for success and this is a key element of that. So the first thing I wanna talk about is excitement. For those of you who have graduated, whether it be your coding boot camp or your degree, congratulations, you made it. I knew you could do it. And it's something to really pat yourself on the back and be proud of. Congratulations again, Lorena, my little sister. She graduated the same boot camp that I did. And it goes without saying that I'm super proud of you, all of you. <laughs> excitement hold on to that excitement because that excitement is going to be the initial fire um, and fuel to that flame when it comes to the process of grinding and applying for these jobs setting up your resume and things of that nature the resume is super important and it can be a very soul-sucking process trying to tailor it for each job you're applying for so i think it's super important that you try and hold on to that excitement that feeling of excitement when you're first getting started as well as what it's going to feel when you imagine what it's going to feel like when you get that first contract or that first offer letter i think the second big thing you're going to feel is nervousness it's totally okay to feel nervous again it's totally okay to feel nervous i think it's very important that people recognize that nervousness and imposter syndrome are completely normal like that's something that's expected in this industry and any really mentally involved industry like this or what they call knowledge work don't let your nervousness hold you back from applying to jobs one of the things you're going to find is there's going to be plenty of jobs who you sort of fit the description of let's say if they have four technologies listed you may know two or three of them but because you don't feel 100 percent confident or well versed or maybe have even heard of that fourth technology you'll stop yourself from applying don't do that apply to every job that you feel at least 50 to maybe 60 percent qualified for people don't say say this a lot but a lot of the things you'll learn in the software industry you'll learn on the job that doesn't mean you're going to have hand holding and training but that does mean that you're going to be given a chance to kind of prove your worth and to kind of get yourself up to speed when you're starting a new position nobody really expects the perfect candidate to come walking through the door every time knowing everything there is to know about every technology that's listed in the requirements section of the job application. So I say, again, I say it's okay to feel nervous and it's okay to feel imposter syndrome, which is the next part what I want to talk about. Imposter syndrome. When it comes to imposter syndrome, it's a dreadful feeling, if you don't know, of feeling like you were just not cut out for whatever job or experience you're about to have and somebody's going to find you out and call you out on your that is something that's totally normal and it's totally expected in the software industry or really any creative or any like intensive industry out there. Um, I felt it as an artist. I feel it now as a YouTuber. I felt it as a photographer. It doesn't matter, but it exists. What I want to tell you is that it's okay if you feel like an imposter sometimes, but don't let it consume you. Don't let that feeling hold you back from proving to yourself that not only are you not an imposter, but you are fully capable of being able to apply or prove your worth in any position that you're applying to. So long as we talk, you met the other requirements of being like 50 to 60%, you know, relevant to the position itself. I think that, uh, one of the things I used to do when it came to suffering those feelings of imposter syndrome and dealing with that feeling of like, Oh, this person's going to call me out in this interview and, sh and really show me that I don't know anything. One of the things I used to do was remind myself of the things that I've already accomplished. If you've already graduated, for example, of your, you know, bachelor's degree, master's degree, boot camp, whatever, that's merit. That's credibility that you actually know what you're doing. You've proven it in a scholastic sense. Even if you're self-taught, if you're taking your own self-paced courses or you've started building these certain projects for yourself to show off in your portfolio, those are testaments to your ability and you need to hold on to that because there are plenty of things out there and there are plenty of people out there who will try and tell you that you don't know what you're talking about. But what's important is that you take a lot of the evidence that you've created thus far and hold on to it when you're, 
you know, progressing through this journey of applying to different jobs and, you know, interviewing with a bunch of different people. Another thing that I think is really important to talk about is uh, discouragement. Discouragement is very common, especially when you're starting to come up on week two, week three, month one, month two of the application process. I mean, I took four months before I landed my first job, and this was coming out of a boot camp where people were halfway through the boot camp because of, you know, a network that they had or a contact they had, and they already had their leg in a door somewhere. So uh, for me, when I was approaching two and a half, three months, I started feeling really discouraged in my, you know, my process because I felt like, man, maybe this boot camp wasn't enough. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe I took out this loan and took this risk and it really wasn't going to prove to be anything. And I was just going to have to suffer for it. Don't allow that to get to you. When I was dealing with that discouragement, it took a lot, but I was able to push through it by, you know, doing what I mentioned earlier, which was like, holding on to my the own my own credibility and the my own merit that I've already created um, as well as you know leaning on my accountability partners you know whether it be somebody that you've talked to to, to keep, hold you accountable to keep applying to jobs or a support system like friends or family to kind of keep you encouraged it was really important that I didn't give in to that discouragement because had I done that I would have stopped replying to recruiters I would have stopped replying to Joey who was the recruiter that got me my first job it just wouldn't have panned out the way that it did if I had given into that discouragement. I'm not saying that discouragement isn't normal, and I'm not saying that it's easy to deal with, but it is something to expect and something to prepare for or to prepare to, to push past because a lot of times when you're applying to a lot of these jobs, you're going to get rejected a lot. I made the mistake of not tracking the jobs that I applied for my first go round. I learned to do that in my second go round before I got my current job. I, I know I applied somewhere around 150 to 170 jobs. Now, for some people, that's a lot. For some people, that's like psh, nothing. Um, but for me, that was a lot. That was the most I've ever applied to any position or for any like role, you know, in an industry. And um, I think out of 150 to 170 jobs, I landed five interviews. And I think three of them got to some type of second round or progress state. And I only got two job offers. And obviously the second job offer that I got was the one that I kept because that was my first job. The numbers are <laughs> the numbers are going to be stacked against you. I'm just going to be honest. And what I mean by that is not that oh you're you're stacked against you to, in a in a way that you're not going to get the job, but they're stacked against you in the way that it's going to make it feel like you're putting in a lot of work and not seeing a lot of fruit. But it's kind of like farming, right? With farming, you have a lot of delayed gratification. You're going through a lot of work to plant these seeds, you're tilling the ground, you're trying to make sure the soil's right. And you have to cultivate and maintain this crop for a long time, weeks, months, sometimes years, if it's something big like a tree, you know what I mean? So uh, before you end up getting that fruit, that, that actual marker of achievement, and it's the same thing with applying for your first job. Not everybody's going to be able to get their job in the first month, two months, three months, or like me, four months. I've seen some people who are still struggling after six months. It just depends on their process. But if you're determined and you're ambitious and you have the drive, I have zero doubts that you'll be able to get a position, especially if you are consistently working towards cultivating that process. I, one of the things I do want, I, I'm going to go into is talking about different steps you can take to cultivate that process and make it a little bit more easier for you or make yourself more appealing as, a, as an applicant. But I think it's really important that we highlight the fact that discouragement is definitely a thing and that momentum loss is 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 a definitely a potential threat to your career to the start of your career and i want to encourage you all not to give into that but anyways thank you guys for watching that was part two where i just talked about some of the emotions that are common in this experience um and what to look out for when you're getting started i don't want you guys to kill the chance of your career kicking off early just because you felt a little bit of imposter syndrome when you got a little discouraged if you need accountability partners hit up my channel, comment below, let me know you're applying, let me know you graduated and I will mark it, I will like it, and I will definitely be checking back to see the progress you guys have made. Um, the next part of this video is gonna be talking about the challenge where I go um, a little bit deeper into the process of making yourself more appealing as an applicant, what to expect with the typical interview process as well as some of the culture fit things and uh, code tests and whiteboarding and post interview behaviors, et cetera. So, if you guys are ready to move on to the next video, check out the little I button that pops up, little card that'll take you to part three. Um, otherwise, I really hope this video was a little bit insightful and pretty helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.